Welcome to another episode of Coach's Corner today. First of all, I want to say um, thank you to everybody out there for subscribing and liking the channel and the views. We really appreciate the support. We're gaining some momentum out there. Today, we have a, a really nice show going on here today. I have Devin, the boss, Puglisi from uh, New Haven, Connecticut. And um, Devin has a, a really, really interesting story here for us. First of all, she's the owner of Boss Body Fitness, um, mother of an eight-year-old, wife. Um, Devin has put together a little company but has had some stuff that she's overcome in her life that we're going to kind of get into. And um, welcome, Devin. Happy to have you here today. Thank you for coming down. Thank you so much for having me. Let's kind of get into you a little bit here. Um, your company is Boss Body, mm -hmm. right? Fitness company that you started during COVID, right? Yep. Tell yep. us a little bit about that, how that came about. So right after COVID, I always stayed in shape. I was always in the gym. And then right after COVID, when COVID hit, I was buying like everything. You know, there was everything was so sparse. I was buying weights. I was buying bands, anything I could get my hands on. And I made a home gym. All the shit was garbage, like except the weights. But I'm saying the bands were garbage. I was like, this is terrible. So then I was like, I could do better than this. I could do better than this. And I was like, I'm going to start my own LLC. And I did. And I started Boss Body. It's bossbodystore.com. And it's bands, uh, fitness bands, mostly for your legs. Um, I have waist trainers. I have water bottles. But I have mostly it's just all kinds of bands, rubber bands, fabric bands, long ones, short ones, anything for exercise. Uh, sliders. I do um classes with girls and we do just using bands band classes and basically that's what motivated me was the pandemic and not having the means of the stuff that I really could so you thought a little bit outside the box here yeah to get into it um you know as far as fitness we were talking a little bit off before you've been involved in fitness for a long time right now what led you there to that okay tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are Right. With this. It got a little, little little rocky road, but yeah. so I was always into fitness, but not as much as I am now. I'm, like I said, I'm not in the best shape I am. I just had surgery. We'll get into that after. But right. um, so I had cancer twice. I was diagnosed with cervical cancer when I was 22 years old, and I had a lot of my cervix removed. And um, I was told I could never have a child. And, you know, I was a nervous wreck when you first hear the word cancer. My grandmother yeah. died of lung cancer. She lived with me. She uh, raised me with my mother. And uh, I was nervous as can be. So I always wanted to stay in shape and get, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go even harder because of that. Then I got hit again after that. I had, I had surgery and I was okay and everything like that. Then I got hit again when I had cervical, I was after the cervical cancer, I was diagnosed years down the road with thyroid cancer and it went to my lymph nodes. It spread to my lymph nodes and I had to have my thyroid removed, the lymph nodes removed, and then I um, had treatment. And I had radioactive iodine treatment, radiation, and then I had another round of uh, radioactive treatment and stuff like that. I was in Doing PET scans, CAT scans right. constantly. The whole, going through the whole scary routine. As, scary as hell. Right. It scares the shit out of you. So I was like, after I stayed in the hospital, after I had my surgery, I left and I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this stop me. This is going to motivate me to even be healthier than I am now. I went right to the gym. I did 10 miles. The doctor said, go home and rest uh, and we'll see you in a few days to see how you did after surgery, whatever. I um, went to the gym, did 10 miles. I saw the doctor and said, Oh my goodness, you're doing so well. What have you been doing? You've been resting? No, I've been working. I went to the gym. I couldn't lift weights, obviously. So I was did 10 miles. Every time I've had obstacles, I was always told by doctors, and I'm not knocking doctors. My sister's a right. doctor. I have a lot of physicians in my family. I'm not knocking them, but you have to know your own body. Uh, down the road, then I became, um, I was a school teacher and I was Still, I'm still under Smilo's care right now. I'm still considered a cancer patient at Smilo. So I still see all my oncologists and for right, my Right, you're going cervix, back for your checkups even and everything my cervix, else. Because my, my cells kind of in my cervix go back and forth. So I see an oncologist there. I still see the one for my thyroid. But 
later down the road, I was always told I could never have a child and I would never conceive, which was fine. I was okay with that. And, but I kept going and going at the gym and like really, really just to stay healthy. Cause I was like, this is what's going to get me through this. Now you're training through treatment. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. How, I mean, that's hard. I mean, I, I had a, I told you I had a girl, um, fighter who was coming off a of treatment and ended up fighting, which I didn't know about. And, you know, in training, she's coming and she's going in and she's throwing up in between training and come back in. How how are you getting up, motivating yourself throughout this? Because mentally. I just knew mentally I had to do it. And I, I hate to say this, but I didn't listen to anybody except myself. Like doctors would be like, don't do this, don't do that. And leading up to the pregnancy thing, I was told I could never have a child. So for women, don't give up because this is another thing. They said, you're never going to have a child. You don't have any of, you don't have a cervix. We took it all out. You have like this much of a cervix. You'll never carry a child. Okay. So I went for IVF just to see what they thought. They said, you have no um, eggs. Your body is destroyed by all the treatment you've had. So I'm like, okay, fine. So they said, we, but we could start you on, we could give you medicine. We only need one egg. I said, all right. They gave me the medicine. I know sooner got home. They called me and said, your blood is off. Don't take the medicine and we're going to draw your blood in two weeks. Do not touch that medicine. I did not touch the medicine. And when they drew my blood in two weeks, I was pregnant. Now, mind you, I was a school teacher. They said, don't worry, you're going to have a miscarriage. So you'll just have a miscarriage. So don't. So you're getting, you're getting negative, negative, negative negative negative. across the board. Every time you see a doctor or you're talking to anybody, you're getting, you're not going to be able to do this. Since I was a kid, when I was a child, I had a seizure at 14. I've always had like obstacles to become, I had to take seizure medicine when I was younger. That was crazy. My whole, and I couldn't drive a car because I was taking the, the seizure medicine. I, I could drive, but then when I wanted to get off, I couldn't drive a car for so long without having a, to make sure I didn't have a seizure. So I've overcome things since I was a little girl. I've always had those like things that have happened to me as a child, but back to having a child. So they said, you're going to have a miscarriage. So I'm waiting to have a miscarriage. I was a school teacher back then. I'm waiting to have a miscarriage, waiting to have a miscarriage. I got further and further along. They're like, all right, now he's going to be premature. So now you have to decide if you want to do steroids for his lungs. My sister's a physician. We discussed it. We said, no, we're not going to do it. No, they said, you're going to be on, you have to be on bed rest. Don't go to work. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth. I never was on bed rest. I went to work every single day, and then I went to the gym every single day after work. And I lifted weights further and further. I got along. The doctors were like, oh, my God, this is crazy. I actually have a doctor that um, wrote a book, and I'm, like, in the book, the story of this, like how crazy okay. this is. And I had my son 15 days early. I was squatting at 7.30 at night on a Thursday. My water broke on Friday morning at 4.30 in the morning. He was 15 days early, completely healthy. I didn't do anything except what I wanted to do. I didn't listen to the doctors. I just kept going and going. I was like, this is the only thing that's going to get me like through it. I know he's going to be fine. And so I never gave up in my life. So that's the thing. Like After the cancer, I never gave up. I kept going. I still go to the gym. I've any obstacle I've overcome, it's always, it's a mental thing that you can always do it. Like you got to always think you can do it. Like I had surgery. I told you I've had breast augmentations and this is another thing for women. Like they know girls don't understand young girls. I had my first breast augmentation when I was 18 years old. I don't recommend that for anybody. I'm being honest because you always have to redo it. Back then silicone was off the market. It was saline. You have to do it every 10 years. I did it when I was 29. Then, okay, gummy bears came out. I did it again. And I was going bigger and bigger and also lifting weights. And then finally, now here I am. I just had surgery. This is my fifth surgery. I just had surgery in March, which is why I'm just coming back to the gym. I had to take some time off, but I didn't take some time off that much. I went, I, I, was on the treadmill. I did light weights, very, very light. But, um, so now I'm just starting to actually get back into it because my implants were actually like, uh, tearing my skin because I was going so hard at the gym. So they had to reconstruct my breasts. So now I'm just getting back into the gym again. And I think the comeback's the best thing. I think that's what I love about. Yeah. I mean, you know, for me, I, I kind of agree with you because as an athlete, I was an underdog and as a coach, I love underdogs. I think uh, they're written off. Um, People don't see certain things in them. I mean, coming out of our gym, you know, Champs Boxing, myself and AJ, um, we see more in people out there that maybe they don't see in themselves. But let's let's take a step back. During all of this, who's your support group? 
My family, my sister, my, mo- what, my mother. Are, are first, they, number one, my mother. Are they telling you, hey, Devin, you're not listening to the doctors. You're a little crazy there. What the hell are you doing here? Mm-hmm. At first, are yeah. they like, you know, what, what like, are you doing? Well, when I was diagnosed with the thyroid cancer, they were, they were poorly differentiated. So they thought cells, it was diagnosed with poorly differentiated cells that spread to my lymph nodes. My mom was like, you have to be careful. This is no joke. Like, what are you doing? You're going to the gym right afterwards. Like, take it easy. I didn't listen. I was like, my, I got this. I'm under, I got it mm-hmm. under control. And my sister, the same thing. Take it easy. Take it easy. And I'm like, no, there's no time to fall. There's no time. That's I always say that. I'm like, there's no time to fall. There's no time to fail. Like, let's go. It's go time. Like, I'm fine. I know I could do this. Even when I was pregnant with my son. Oh, you're supposed to be on bread, bed rest. Like, you're lying to the doctors. Like, telling them you're at home when you're teaching. Then you're going to the gym. I'm like, what's meant to be is meant to be. And I, I can do this. You have to mm. know your body. And you also have to have that mindset that, like, anything is possible. Like, you're going to get through it. it it's You're going to get through it. If you're going to, if you fall, you're not going to get through it. If you crumble, you're not going to get through it. Yeah, once you lay down, that's it. That's it. That's it. So you know, like, I, once you stop, you're fucked. That's like really what how I feel. So I always had the best support group. My mother and my sister were top notch going through everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, I'm very close with my mother. She lives right down the street. Yeah. I'm Italian, 100% Italian. My sister, she lives uh, 20 minutes away. But they were my biggest support group, especially going through everything. But they always thought like they always listen to doctors like, oh, the doctor said this. I don't give a fuck what the doctor said. I'm yeah. fine. Like I could do this. I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. When I was going to the gym and I was radioactive, I still from a pill. I had to take a radioactive pill and they're like, stay away from people. I did. I, I definitely followed their instructions, but I went right back. I felt like shit, but I kept going. I How like, are you getting up? I mean, honestly, look, we've known people who have went through cancer, went through treatments and it, it's tough just going through the treatments. I don't know. I've been around it. My family's had it. Um, my parents, I've, you know, lived it. And I mean, getting out of bed every day, let alone just to get out of bed is tough. But now you're going to work. Your your son is born. You're, you're training. I mean, there had to be days that you didn't want to do it. No, but yeah. I did it for my, I knew for my son, I have this child here. That's only, he's an only child. I have to do it for him. I have to right. get up and do it for him and be strong and live for him. And I also saw my grandmother who lived with me as I was a child, and she was diagnosed with lung cancer. And they said she had six months to live, and she lived for six years after that. She never gave up either. Like, she was a fighter in a way. Like, she didn't work out or anything, but she was a serious fighter. Like, nothing stopped her. You would look at her. You would never know she was going through chemo. She didn't lose any hair. She was, like, all dolled up all the time, like, hair done, this and that, to go to chemo, dress up. Yeah, but but that that goes by looking at how— and we go back generations, all right? So, look, I, I, in similar simulation situation, my mother had lung cancer, similar simu- situation to your grandmother, mm-hmm. going to work, dressing up, you know, they didn't want to see, they didn't want anybody to see and them yeah. and to know. But they also, that generation didn't want to burden people with it. Yeah, true. They were the stronger um, part of the family. They had, you know, a job to do. They took it seriously. Their DNA was different. You're right. um, and I think um, talking to you and, and in a little time that I have, we can see that is in your DNA. I mean, you know, you've been around people, you're working with women, you're working with other um, individuals in, in fitness right now. You know what's in their DNA when you talk to them. Yeah. You know after a session with somebody what they're really like, who's going to stick, who's not, who's going to— Who's going to make excuses? Who's yeah. going to say, and I can't? And there's a lot of excuses out there. That's well, the look, thing. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy today to make an excuse, right? It's easy. We're busy. We're this, we're that. We all go through it. Or we're moms and, oh, I'm, I'm 40. I'm, I'm going to be 45 in a couple months. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they make up the excuse, oh, I'm 45, you know, whatever. I'm never going to get my body in shape. What? Like, I don't, my body hasn't changed and I'm not, I'm not lying. My body hasn't changed. I'm not, I have never fluctuated in weight or anything like that to say I gained X amount. I'm always, I'm a hundred pounds and I'm five one. I've always been a hundred pounds and right. just under five one. It's like these women think like since they're of an, a certain age that they have to give up like on the way, you know what I mean? No, stick with it. Like you, you want to, you have a goal, stick with it. You know, if I could do it, anybody could do it. Yeah. So now you're diagnosed and you're, you're training. What, what adaptions did you make with your diet? Did you change that up a little bit? What kind of research did you did? I, did you do to really say, hey, 
I need to have the knowledge here to figure a plan of what's going to work for me to overcome this. Well, my sister would buy me tons of cancer fighting foods to eat books about cancer fighting foods. So I incorporate shiitake mushrooms, which are cancer fighting lemons, which are, um, kind of like chemotherapy and natural chemotherapy, they say, but, um, but I've always eaten a pretty healthy diet, except on the weekends. I crap. Yeah, that must be pretty hard coming out of Italian family. It is hard. Coming you know? out, but yeah. I mean, you could try no, to listen. eat healthy. If they put that good Italian bread on the table, yeah, you're I screwed. Know. I know. When I was younger, my grandmother used to say, Devin's so little. She's so small. Like she, you need, we need to fatten her up. And she would like make heavy, like fry pork chops and salt them up or like fry whatever and yeah. give it to me. And like, you know, I was fine. Like if she ever saw me now, she'd be like, oh my God, you need to gain weight or whatever, yeah. you know, or what are you doing with the muscles? You know, they were old school, but I mean, I, I do eat healthy, but I do, I make meatballs every Sunday. I cook every Sunday. I make broccoli rub meatballs. Not turkey meatballs. I do. Nah. I do. I do. I know. I know. No, I know it's, it's like okay. Good. I for know. For Italian girl. I know. I know. But my son likes them, but I do cook every Sunday. I have pasta on Sunday. So I don't, I don't neglect myself from Right, you got to, like, see, here's the balance, right? Too much is no good. Too little is no, no good. good. That's All right, good. so, you, you know, even though, and we, and we talk with fighters like this, you can't deny all the time. No. You can't deny. There's got to be some, some, that's right. And especially as we get older and we have responsibility. Okay, you're a mother, wife, you're out doing stuff for your own self. That's your life. You're not training. Like I tell people, some fighters train all the time. That's their life. They're able to be 365. They have the financial means to do so, and it's not a problem. When we deal with everyday people who are fighters, and I have fighters that work full-time jobs and fight, now a balance comes into play. You got to balance a family. You got to balance a job. You got to balance your own personality of your ups and downs. So, yeah. you know, we tell people, look, you got to be realistic of what you're doing and where you're going. Yeah. And maybe sometimes we're hard on ourselves, but you got to give yourself some pat on the back sometimes. And okay. I know it's hard. Yeah, but you do. You know, but that's where your support group comes in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I forget and I don't give myself a pat on the back and I'm hard on myself. And I'm like, and I go harder at the gym. I'm like, I, but and I, okay, going harder now, knowing what you know a little bit. Right. Let's talk about this for a second. You're well versed in the fitness end of it. You're well versed on your body. You're well versed on what training to do and what you could bring. How are you recovering now? As because we talk about this all the time with athletes now. As we get older, recovery comes into play, no oh, yeah. matter what. I mean, you know, and it's become a big business. Mm -hmm. And I think I I like the total aspect of it. I think it's definitely keeping athletes and people healthier longer. Mm -hmm. And and we have a a lot of great stuff out there. What are you doing on that end? My recovery, you're gonna laugh. Is I just take days off and I do nothing. And no I, ice and baths, no no um, sauna, no. No, I don't do nothing. Epsom salt. I do none of that. I really? don't do any of that. So my recovery is just taking some rest days and mm -hmm. out of the gym. Out of the gym, and I just eat what I want, or and that's it. Like I don't, I don't know. I just I feel like I'm almost born for a little bit of pain. I don't know. I don't know if that right. sounds crazy. And I, and I don't look, so maybe, the, maybe the pain is the motivation, you know, I think and, that's what drives, you know, me. sometimes look, and, and, the mental, and like, if, if you don't feel it a little bit, then I guess really you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. So I feel like, you I, know, you know, people will say, I, I do this, I do that. My rest is just a, re a few rest days and that's it. And then I'm, I'm back at it. And do you feel it in your body now? Joints yeah. as you, as you're getting, I'll be honest. And obviously, I, and you're a runner, right? Are you running outside? Or you running treadmill? No, I I cut out some of my cardio, but okay. I was that was when I was going through the uh, the tr cancer, Treatment, and I right. and I and I couldn't I couldn't lift weights because I had my lymph nodes taken out of my neck and stuff like that. But I mostly lift weights. I do um, the stair step for but only like five minutes, and I do uh, the elliptical five minutes. I don't do a lot of cardio. So it's mostly lifting weights, and like I said, I alternate like machines one day. Um, and then free weights another day. And then my recovery is just resting, taking a few rests. Are you one day off a week too? What are you in the gym? One to two days off. One to two days. Yeah. Usually one, sometimes on Saturdays I try to go, but. Yeah. Um, and, and how do you mix this in as being a mom? Well, it's hard. This is what I was going to say. My son plays baseball four days a week. He's right. there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I 
do all that with him. And like Saturdays, I take him to his practices or his games, whatever it is. And I just, I uh, multi, I multitask. I just have to multitask. And then, you know, I'll sneak in the gym a little bit of time that I get. Like sometimes he'll go with his aunt um, on his dad's side after his game and he'll have something to eat. I'll sneak in the gym if I can. Um, with my son in the morning, like I, I used to do, hence I'm going to get back there because I had the surgery, but I'll be back there. I used to do 600 ab rolls in the morning and still make sure my son push-ups to 600 push-ups. Now I'm I'm just starting to get back into it. So I, I do like 100 to 200 now after the surgery, which I'm going to get back there in no right. time. You know, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But um, I have I make sure he's fed. He's, he's ready for school. He's dressed. You just have to do it. Like you have to step up to the plate in life. Nobody's going to give you shit. That's that's how it, I and no, honestly, no one's going to do anything for you except yourself. And that's how I look at it. Like in, in reality, the only person that's going to really take care of you is yourself like and I have to take I have to step up to the plate I have a son I have to be there I have to go to I'm a room mother for him yeah I mean look responsibility is um certain people take it certain don't yeah and I think in today's society we see a lot of people don't take responsibility they place blame on others and and those values are starting to die that you know we kind of grew up on and our families kind of you know Instilled in us. Yes. And you know what? And your kids have to see you. Yeah. You know My what I mean? My son does push-ups in the morning sometimes yeah, with that's... me. It's hilarious. He's he's gonna eight years old and he's like he was doing them since he was like six. He's like, Mom, I'm gonna do a few push ups. Like he goes down in the gym sometimes and he'll lift five pound weights. He's got ten pound weights. I'm like, all right, take it easy. <laughs> he's a little guy, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's just funny because they see what you're doing and they see and and I'm gonna tell you he's little and he's a great baseball player. He's got a great arm. Mm-hmm. He's crazy good. And it's it's just like he sees that like you don't give up. Like he doesn't he wants to practice after school all the time, you know? I mean, my dad also back in the day, my dad's in his eighties. Um but back in the day, my dad was a baseball player, and he was drafted by the Minnesota Twins. Oh, nice! Long time ago, so he made it to the major leagues. But he was like low on the totem pole. He wasn't right. like some superstar, but still, he still did it. Mm-hmm. And uh, my son, like you know, I, I my son takes after him. I think with that aspect of things, and he watches me like. Well, you got to be the motivation if you're moving in the gym and you're. And I'm with him most of the time. It's just, you know you're leading I. by example, mm-hmm. and I think sometimes like look. Kids are, are pretty sharp today. They're, you know, they pick up fast. They're going to pick up of what you're doing and, you know, your your tendencies and everything. And if you're for real, yeah. you know, what you're going to bring to the table as far as, and, and you're actually showing, you're not telling. No, exactly. You know, you're showing him. And there's a difference between parents who tell their kids what to yeah, do. Yeah, talk is cheap. You know what I mean? You're actually out there saying, all right, look, I'm tired today. I don't feel like going to the gym. You know what? We've been running around, whatever. But I'm still here doing what I'm doing. So that's got to, you know, speak some volume. Mm-hmm. But also you got clients now, right? So you're mixing all of this in with, yeah, with, girls, what, that I train. with girls you train. And um, tell us a little bit about that. Give me your style of when you're, you so, know, so somebody walks into you, says, hey, Devin, I'm here. Um, are you training mostly women or you train men also? Women. Okay. So women straight up. Yeah. Um, what's your style? Well, you have to get to know the person because right off the bat, if they're just there just for one time and they just want to see and you know they're going to fall off, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try to motivate them and to stay with it. Like, so we'll start off slow. You know, some people say, oh, this is too fast. It's okay, we'll slow down, you know. But basically, you have to get to know the women, know their goals. And, you know, a lot of times, I'm going to be honest, they're unrealistic goals. Everyone sets these unrealistic goals. They want to lose 20 pounds in one week? Yeah. and they they Can you give them Ozempic, right? Yeah, that's 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 like what it is. And it's like it's not realistic. You have to have reachable goals, achievable ones. You know what I mean? So that's what I try to do is achieve what we can with what we have, you know? And I think that's what makes them successful. If you're setting a bar for yourself and you know it's it's not going to happen in two weeks, like you said, it's not going to. But if we do realistic goals and then we can – are they intimidated by you? No, I'm friendly. I'm a friend. Uh, it has what? nothing to do about friendly. No, like- <laughs> it's not friendly. Listen, you're talking about people come in, you're you're fit, you're in shape. Um, that's what they're yeah, no, want to be, know. you know, is, is, it, is it in, you know, listen. Some, some I'm not going to lie. Some girls give like 
jabs and stuff like that. But that's just how women are. They give jabs and you roll with it. Okay, you want to be a fucking... Are, yeah, are you, t- <laughs> are you tough or yeah. you're soft when you train? No, I'm tough. We got to do this. Let's go. Yeah? Yeah. You're going to get in their ass a little bit mm-hmm. and yeah. push them along? Yeah, I do. I try my best, yeah. you know, because there's no time. Like, there's no time to be wasting and talking about, oh, my boyfriend and this and that. I don't, right. Okay, that's great. Let's go. Everybody's got a hardship. Everybody's got a lot of shit on their plate. Mm-hmm. Let's go. We're here for only a certain amount of time. And, like, it's fine. I want to hear about it, too. I don't want to shut you out, but we have to get down. We got to get down to business, yeah. Yeah. Now, is your workout mostly – now, obviously, you, you put the band stuff and all that stuff together – is that all part of your workout or is it weights or is it, yeah. do you change it up for each individual? I change it for each individual. So it's customized. It's customized. But um, I have about four girls that do the same thing. We do the same routine and they're on the same level. So mm-hmm. it's good. So they're at the same level right now. It's always customized. And like for myself, it's customized. Like it's what works, like we said, what works for you might not yeah. work for me. Yeah. So I do, like I alternate my workouts and like you, Every other day I'm doing machines and then weights, machines and then weights, you know. I'm squatting one day, then the other day I'm just doing machines. It's different. It's, you know, and it might not work. Doing a full body workout doesn't work for everybody. Everyone does body parts per day. Like, oh, I did my arms today. I'm doing legs tomorrow. I did tries. I don't do that. I just do a full body. So I literally go sick, do a full body every day. And then I'm done. I'm, I'm Yeah, well, so what are you seeing? You're seeing people, what, a couple times a week? So you only have a small window to get it done. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, I mean, some people are training every day. Yeah. You know, and, and then, you you know, that's a little different. But if you're getting someone who, you know, is a housewife, a mother, or whatever their situation, you, working individual, business professional, their time is limited. limited. So you got to try to get as much as you can get out of them. Exactly. Um. Where are you working your training right now? I do it out of my friend's studio. Okay. And um, I've just been doing that. And I work out at the gym. Sometimes my friends will come with me to the gym and I'll just work out with them and help them. You know, obviously not a business aspect. And it works. Now, do you see yourself as someone who is motivational to women? I hope so. I hope I do. I don't, I mean, I hear it. I hear it. They would say, Deb, like, I can't believe, you know, like I've had some trauma in my life and I. Like the rest of us. Hey, listen, it wouldn't be life if you didn't have a little little trauma and drama, you know, it's like, listen, (laughs) you're bullshit. And if you went through life unscathed, you know. Yeah, you're right. You know, like that's I tell everybody we got issues. If you're telling me you don't, you're a liar. You know, I mean, not you necessarily, (laughs) but in in general, right? I've had some trauma and some drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I hope I'm like you. I hope I motivate. No, I think um, I think you kind of sell yourself short. In a little bit of time, I know you, and now we're talking. I think you kind of tell, sell yourself short. And as we talked about outside a little bit, um, do you see yourself as a role model? Kind of, sort of. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm putting I'm, on you on the spot here, I want Devin. you to. You know I want I, you because you know I'm going to be honest. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was uh, No, lie to me. No, no. I was bullied as a child. Okay. And I'll never forget this girl would always bully me about my body and say how small I was. And, you know, because I was always a small, petite little thing. And, you know, I had braces and I was like a little ugly duckling, you know. And she would, on the bus, always like jab at me and jab at me. And, you know, she bullied me. So I, I always, that's another reason why I always wanted to like fight and like look. I, I always wanted to like be in shape and never, and I'm not, you're going to think I'm a horrible person, but I see her on social media and like, I don't think she should have bullied me, <laughs> but she did. And Listen, so my point is, so I think that's why I have that. Like, I still see that little girl that like, you know, that was bullied with the braces and, you know, so I, I am like, I yeah, I don't know if I, I hope I motivate women. I, yeah, I mean, I think we all have stories like that, maybe not in the sense of being bullied, but things that kind of get you to the point where say, hey, I'm, it's going to motivate me. I'm not that person. Yeah. And, and you take it with you, you know, and you wear it. Through life. And you know? I, and I do. And I think that that's why it's so important nowadays, like with kids being so cruel to other kids. Like, I'm going to be honest. That's why I got my first boob job because I was so flat chested and she would make fun of me. 
I was 18 years old, like when I got that, but I, there, when I had that surgery, there was just, you know, when you're bullied and stuff like that, you want to, I don't know. I just always wanted to be better. Then I came through obstacles with health issues. I always wanted to keep going and going. So I hope I motivate people. So people do say that women do say that my friends say that they're like, Dev, you but you know what, if for, like, as a trainer, and as a coach, right. And this is, you know, we look at that, right. You, you have to motivate the people that you're, you're coaching. Mm hmm whether you think so or not, you know, yeah. it's not like, you know, your story is going to be inspirational to somebody to say, look, if she can do it, I can do it. No, okay. There's no reason why I can't do it. All right. You know, and it's, it's little wins every day. I tell everybody, I said, look, we got to do a little things right every day. And then big things will start to happen. Right. If you don't do little things every day, can't do Nothing's big things. Nothing's going to happen doesn't work like that. And everything is a process. And I think, you know, right now with fitness and health and recovery right now, there's so much instant gratification out there that nobody wants to put the work in. You're right. I agree. You know what I mean? I'm, I mean, you know, Ozempic, all this stuff out there is all quick hit stuff to get you healthy, mm -hmm. um, to make you look good. Yeah, but then you get off the Ozempic and then if you can't maintain the lifestyle of eating the small portions, you're fucked. You're going to get you're going to gain weight and not to, this might be a touchy subject, but even with steroids, like I, I would never touch a steroid. People have said, I've had comments on, I had an Instagram account before that was hacked. I had like 10,000 followers, a lot of people, and they would write these mean things. I was, um, you know, I was actually like modeling for different, uh, companies on Instagram. It was like gym motivation. This and that they would take, uh, take a picture like, Oh, and, uh, uh, can I have a picture of you? I'd sell you a picture. So I'd sell a picture of, of myself just in, you know, flexing or whatever. And I'd, oh, uh, she's on trend, uh, trend baloney. And, and people mm -hmm. are mean. And that's not the case. Yeah, but like, people don't know. I don't, I put in the work. I yeah. Don't. But also the other thing is, let's let's stay with that for a second, okay? I think people who. I'm not knocking. Because, no, not, not the steroid aspect, yeah, okay? Yeah, I'm not knocking anybody. Women in fitness, that. okay, have, look, personally, I give credit to anybody, woman, man, whoever it is that you could do. You know, the the way society looks at women is to be not muscular, not fit like that, okay? So yeah. people look at it and say, oh, they have to be doing something because it's not natural. But I think today, knowing what we know in fitness, knowing what's out there, the equipment and everything else, and the knowledge that's out there, people to put the plan. I think to me, I like that. I like to see that. I like to yeah. see somebody who's going to say, okay, be a little different. But the society says, oh, easy fix. She yeah. juiced. She did this or he did that. Yeah. yeah. There are guys and girls that do it. No disrespect. To no them. disrespect. I really, yeah. really, that's your business. That you, what Prerogative, you want to do, yeah, you do it. That's fine for whatever reason. You know? But I think on the natural end of people in fitness, and, you know, all of a sudden they start to see some more results and right away they assimilate it to juice mm -hmm. or steroids. Yeah. They don't. And we I talk about this with a lot of people who come on the show. Right. People don't see the work that you put in to get to where you are today. I've said it with fighters. I said it with actors who've been here. And I'm going to say it with you. Also, people don't realize that you're getting up at X amount in the morning. OK. You're eating certain foods every day, right? You're a mother, wife, you got a business. All of this goes around to your training. What do they think? It's a magic wand that just happened that you just happened today, popped up. Yeah. No, People don't right. realize all the back-end work mm -hmm. that goes into what we do to be successful. Exactly. And I think we're losing that in society today. Yeah. Instant gratification is coming in. Okay, pill, Like you said, shot, it was epic. Yeah. whatever, surgery, this, that, and the other thing. I'm good. But if you don't maintain, what good is it? I know. You know, what good is it? You know, it's like having a car that you don't change the oil or take care of or clean. Eventually, it's going to fall apart. It's not going to run. You're absolutely right. You know, so, I mean, look, what, as a coach, and you have people coming to you, right, right now to say, Devin, what, what do I need to do to change? What is it that you're going to tell them? Like when you're meeting with an individual and you sit down and you're you're assessing where you are. Well, you ask them their diet, what they yeah. what they eat. 
and then their goals. So like, are you brutally honest yeah, with I am. them? I am. Like in a I sense, don't like at all. I don't. I mean, not to be mean to anybody or not not trying to look to be hurtful by no not. means. Okay, because you seem to take what you do very serious as what we do also as trainers. Um, I think people lack that honesty. You know, yeah, especially no, when it becomes, in a sense, where it's a business. Because thing. I was just going to say, because it's a business thing. I, I don't even care about the business thing. I just want right. them to be happy and see results and be happy within themselves and reach their goals, you know, like reachable goals. Right. You know, so it might be changing your diet. They'll say, what do you eat? What do you eat? What I eat might not be what's good for them. Like I said, I eat five eggs every morning with kale and shiitake mushrooms and a huge bowl of oatmeal with almond butter and protein powder and blueberries and blackberries and almonds and flax seeds and it's, tr- it's not it's a huge meal some right. people don't need that in the morning you know because they're not doing what as much as what i may be doing at the gym or you know so i'm honest i'm like okay so what do you eat so let's change th- some things around you know maybe cut out some soda L- little things not anything that's going to make them crazy where they're going to be you know nuts and they right. can't do it you want they're gonna fail to you're they're setting gonna, them yeah, up for you failure you don't want to set anybody up for failure i think yeah. that goes back to when i was teaching years ago you know what children are capable of i taught for 15 years in new haven and you want them to reach their goal at their level at their own individual level do you think your your teaching experience helps you become a better coach yeah definitely definitely that experience was was great as a teacher then i had my son i resigned but i thought yeah it was it was great, you know, because you know that you want people to reach their goal. This was academically at their own level, to be successful at their own level. It's the same thing as fitness. Be successful at your own level. Reach your own goal, reachable goals. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have a kid, oh, you're going to be reading it here when he's down here. That's not possible. It's not It's not right. a reachable goal in, in the, the amount of the school year. It's the same thing as when you're training somebody. Yeah. You have to have reachable things. And everybody's happy. Then everybody becomes happy if it's like, yeah. oh, we could do this. It's little steps. Like you said, it's yeah. the little steps that lead to the big things. Yeah, definitely. You ever turned down a client? No. Really? No. Somebody that came in and said, no, this this is just not a fit for me. No, because it's a small – I live in a an area where it's a small community. Everyone knows everybody. And, right. And I, I mean, I, you're getting you know, referrals, job, obviously. People are coming other, to you through other girls. through other clients that you work with, women that you know, maybe people that you you know have seen you on your social media or whatever the case. But friend. no friends, friends of friends, right? Yeah. Um, you know, go see Devin, you know. But you feel you fit with everybody. I mean, honestly, I'll like I've honest. had, I've had. For me, my thing comes down to like this: I'm not everybody's cup of tea. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm. You have to vibe with me. You have to, you have to understand that I'm going to give you a little tough love, but I'm also going to look out for you and I'm going to push you and challenge you. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold your hand through the process. Yeah. You know, and 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 it. that's I, where I think. Some and and it's tough. Away. It's tough because business is business sometimes, and you know sometimes it's it's just. It's not about the business sometimes. Yeah, I know. You know, I mean, if you're going to, we're working close with people. You're you're interacting with people, whether it's every other day or every day for an hour, two hours. You're there with them. You're hearing their their, their stuff with their life, their wife, <laughs> their girlfriend, their brother, what? their sister. Boyfriends. Boyfriends, whatever the hell they're talking about that they're going through. Yeah. You know, you got to, you got to, and, and you got to play your part a little bit and understand that and be sympathetic, but also but be, the, also co- have to get down be to the coach. And yeah. be, but but you know what? You got to have that vibe. That person has to be able to trust you. And you got to kind of feel like, okay, I could work with this person. Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, there's somebody. I but, think that's where the teaching thing came in because I, like, when I was a teacher, you had to vibe with all the kids. You yeah, you, you had no choice. Yeah, no choice. So it's like, I feel like it's the same thing with what I do now it's you know and I, I I'm not saying I'm hey I'm no I'm not a great person I I, I I but I get along for the most part I get along mm. with a lot of people I don't have beef with a lot of people and you know right. and I just it I'm pretty easy going I'm friendly yeah. so it's like and that's how I got the name boss I would go into the gym and these guys would say me good morning boss good morning boss and then just stuck and then I was boss and then I was like oh shit I'm gonna be so you boss. ran with it I'll be Devin boss buddy yeah, <laughs> yeah. listen that's how great names are struck sometimes, you know. We yeah. can sit here and think about it all day long, write 20 names on the paper, you know, come over, somebody says something, and yeah. 
Yeah. And, a, and a great name comes out across the board. Yeah. What are you looking to do in the future? Where are you know. looking to take this? Because obviously, I, look, know, I want to hang you out got, with you. You're so you cool. Some, I think no, I'm no, going to no, hang no, out no, with no, you. No. <laughs> you got some great stuff here. Um, you brought some beautiful stuff out here, some bands and everything, which I'm going to put to work later in the gym. Yeah. Um, some really cool workout stuff. And thank you for the hat, which I'll be rocking on my next episode for you. Cool. Um, thank you so much. What are you, what are you looking to do? Is it going to be oh. studios? Is it going to be one on one or what? Or is it just know. you're riding the storm right now? I don't know. Everyone asks me, they're like, you think you'll compete? You're 45. You want to go into the masters? Yeah, we I'm talked like, about that I'm before. Like, I don't think so, but maybe who the heck knows? You know? Do you want to see? Okay. What? We we were talking about this a little bit. End to the means, right? Um, you've put in this work over the years. What is it all for? Right? No, not just that. Like, do you have to? For me. Athletes have to answer a question for themselves, right? Yeah. Do I belong there? You know, like you in the fitness world to go on stage after all you've done and what you've overcome to stand up there with people who do it regularly, pros, whatever you want to do, people who are competing on a regular basis, yeah. and for you to walk up there and, and do it with them, does that answer the question I belong here. Yeah. I can do this. I mean, as just to say I did it, maybe I might. I don't know, but maybe, maybe not. I don't know where the future is going to take me. Hopefully, somewhere. I mean, the fighter <laughs> for fighters, we we need to tell and and all athletes. An athlete has to answer: Do I belong? Yeah. Can I can I be there? And I think that that's you know, yeah, not for everybody. But I think sometimes, like, look, you put in a lot of work. Um, you're obviously, obviously well versed in what you do and been around and have knowledge. And if you were to compete, I'm sure you'd have a, a good support system, good coaching and a good plan to as for what it would be. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe it's just competing for myself. For yourself, right? Just competing. But getting back to you on locally is like, do you see yourself um, – Outside of this studio, doing more in fitness, would it be more locations? Would it be yeah? Where home. where is it? You know. Yeah, one day. I, I mean, do you th do you think? Um, look, in the past, we've seen a lot of places that are just for women. I know some places, some gyms are intimidating for women that they don't want to come into the gym for whatever reason. Okay, um, you know, maybe it's it's more guy, it's more testosterone running around the gym. Mm -hmm. Maybe the place stinks. Maybe it's not <laughs> clean. It's not right. just an environment where they want to they want to be in. Um, you bring something unique to the table. Are you thinking about that, or you're day to day right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm day to day right now. I'm, 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 my parents are moving, so I'm moving my parents, and mm -hmm. so I'm going through some stuff right now. But I'm thinking about. It. I don't know. I mean, maybe one day. I I prefer to work out with men. I'm mean, gonna be honest. When I'm in the gym. I'm with the weights with the guys. But you started that way. Yeah, I start. I I connect more working out with men than than yeah. I do with women. You know what I mean? Is it is it because? So we'll assimilate it to female fighters, and some female fighters come into the gym, and they're accepted right away by the men because of their skill level, their personalities. They just seem to gravitate towards that situation. Yeah, that's how I. Am. Do you? Were you accepted at first? Yeah. I've always been, always men. On personality or on skill? I think both. When they see a woman come in with muscles and stuff like that and she's serious, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I think it's like, like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, and then you build a relationship. You build a rapport with them. You see right. them all, every day. And then next thing you know, you're working out with them. You're sharing weights. You're going back and forth. You're talking to, about their lives, you know, and just while in the mix. Yeah, but they, they see that you're capable and knowledgeable about what you're doing. You're not just in there. No. Bullshitting Bullshit. around. No. You're in there. So you're, I prefer you know, to work out with men. I, even though I do work out with women, I prefer myself when I have that time to be with <laughs> men. I don't know. Yeah. Um, right. Your son right now takes a lot of time for you, baseball player. Um, basketball player. Basketball player. <laughs> like running around with the You're running around. <laughs> um, Chicken with my head Do cut you off. think uh, he's going to follow your footsteps in fitness? I hope so. I hope so. Do you talk about it? Yeah. He's a small little guy for his age, and I hope he does. Like, I hope he 
lifts weights and like I hope he does get into fitness. I think he will. Like he does push ups and stuff at home. And, yeah. You know. Does he eat like you? Do you change his meals around or no? No, no. <laughs> he, he doesn't eat like me, but he does. He does eat the food I make, so right. he does eat turkey meatballs. You know, that's nah, listen. It's He's all Italian. It's he'll all never good. know a regular meatball, but listen, if you if you do it well, some people won't even know the difference, yeah, right? Put you enough know. garlic and sh- put enough like seasoning that. and everything in it. Yeah, listen, it, it's definitely uh, it's something. So if we were to walk into your studio, I'm gonna send you somebody over there. Go work out with Devin. Give me the workout. Forget the talk. Okay. Right to right to the rip. I, An hour with Devin. What we do, do we legs, what do we expect? Full body with bands. We do legs first. Tell everybody what full body is. All right. A full body is you're doing all part all body parts. Mm-hmm. So I try to get in all body parts for them. We do the um bands on our legs. We're we're walking slowly. We're doing sliders. We're doing uh squats with the bands. We have my bands with so we're doing bicep curls, we're doing triceps. We're doing abs on the sliders. We're doing legs on the sliders. Um, we're doing um, kickbacks. We're doing um, a weight in our legs, and we're doing fire hydrants. Uh, we got bands on the whole time. Right. We're sweating. It's not like anything that you just think, oh, you put on a few bands and you're doing it. No, we're actually sweating. We're actually hitting every, your biceps, your triceps. Um, we hit back. We do flies everything like that, all with bands. And then we add weight. Like, so once you progress from there, oh, let's put some weight on in the back of your leg and do the um, kickbacks or the I, the um, fire hydrants. You know what I mean? Or right. let's add some more weight when we're doing, I have ankle straps that are boss body and then we attach them to the bands. Let's add some more weight. So we do all that. So we're doing a full body hitting every body part that we can in that small amount of time. And they're sweating. Hour? These girls are sweating. More, longer yeah, than an, an hour. hour. And these girls are sweating. Right. So, so I do what we can. We do what we can. We do what you can. Um, going back now, just want to kind of recircle a little bit back on, are you involved in any charities with cancer or anything right now that you do? Or is it just? Well, the proceeds of my, um, some of the proceeds go to cancer research. To research mm-hmm. on that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Love to give back there. Um I'm going to kind of wrap it up a little bit here. And I kind of fire a couple of questions at people here um, and as do, we wrap it up. And I do, not to interrupt, but I also have, have my son bring presents to the children's house. Oh, beautiful. Oh, but that's, beautiful. okay. That's go awesome. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Awesome job that's right there. Um, why don't you tell everybody where we can find you, first of all, and, you know, your social media, your website, um, what you got going on there. So I'm on Instagram. I'm Devin underscore boss body. Um, you can link onto my boss body And uh, yeah, you can hit me up on Instagram. And well, I, had, listen. I got hacked. So I have a smaller account now, but I had a bigger one and we'll see where it goes. So we kind of finish up here. I mean, look, I love your story. Um, we definitely like to have you back here again. Back. Um, and you know, I definitely think you're an inspiration to not only women, to everybody out there right now who's battling something to, you know, overcome health issues is hard enough alone, but to overcome them with the attitude that you bring. And and look, I got to shout out Dan from um, Get Elevated because that that was the connection here when I saw that, because, you know, that saying, you know, attitudes crush obstacles is and I just. How he came up with that, I think it just fits a lot of things, cool. not only athletes and everything else. And I think you really, you know, I'm not saying it because you're here. It's um, you really bring that to the table. You Thank definitely. You. And I and I know in a short time talking to you, you you don't like talking about yourself too much. You're a very humble individual. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think is very inspirational. And, and I think you should have your voice a little bit more. Because I think you're inspirational, um, not only to women, but to people who are overcoming stuff, who are adapting and overcome. But we're going to kind of fire the last couple of questions at you here, put you on the spot. Yeah. Nothing crazy. If, um, you know, I kind of do it every week with everybody. And if you were in a foxhole, who are you picking to be in that foxhole with you? You have one person. Who would you go to? 
Um, don't, don't ask me what a foxhole is. I, I know, know you're a I, teacher. I know what a foxhole <laughs> is. Um, oh, God, this is tough. My I, my mom is my go-to, but she gets a little nervous. Mm. I think I'd have to go with my close friend, Mike Benevento. Okay. Good answer there. I'm going to give you three dinner guests, dead or alive. You're going to have dinner, talk, whatever. Who are they? You. Me? No, no, it can't be me, no. Come on. There's, um, very, there's, As a teacher, come on, there's got to be people out there that you want to sit down and pick their brain. Yeah. Somewhere. Celebrity, I, non-celebrities, whatever. Yeah. Um, Family members. No, I, I don't know who I would have, who I'd like to have dinner with. I don't want to be like, oh, Kim Kardashian, because I'm not like that. Like, yeah. I don't really give a shit about that stuff, but like, I don't know, maybe, maybe it would be maybe Kim Kardashian, just to see how the fame, like, and, yeah. you know, she's had some difficult marriages and relationships and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'd probably pick her brain about how she gets through, like, the criticism and stuff like the that. The day-to-day and everything. The day-to-day criticism, you All know. Right. And that's one. Stuff. Um, I would definitely want to talk to Mike Tyson because I've heard from someone that boxers have, they're insecure, but yet really strong. So I'd want to know, like, talk to him, pick his brain. And... I'm trying to think someone else. Um, I don't know. Like, as an athlete, uh, I'm trying to think. This might sound crazy, but maybe sit down and talk to (laughs) A-Rod from the Yankees just to see, you know, his life was like, you know. Or no, you know, Derek Jeter, because, you know, he always stayed out of the limelight, and he was always like, I want to see how he he managed to stay out of the limelight because there's a lot of temptation, and he was never like, it was his upbringing. Caught with, like, women and crazy stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'd say Derek Jeter, yeah. Derek Jeter. Well, listen, it was really great to have you here. Oh, my God. It was so I hope you're going to come back again. And Thank you so definitely much. stay in touch. And then maybe we can put a little collaboration together one day. I would day, love to. Bring you over, put some gloves on you. And oh, I'd love Move to. you around the ring. And, uh, I'm going to hold you to that. I love, it was listen, great to Listen, not a problem. Here. But um, once again, I appreciate everybody for following us. I want to shout out to my guys at Nirvana. Nirvana Superwater for Recovery with the HMB, um, sponsor for us. We appreciate them helping our fighters, helping all our athletes. My guy Al at Proze Boxing in Jersey, um, apparel, boxing gloves, everything, shirts, great supporter of our program at uh, Champs Boxing. Um, my guys Ian Bick and Matt Cronin over here for all the videography and everything that they do to produce Coach's Corner. And um, we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys again. Have a great day.